lovely foggy day in Bedfordshire. It's early December. So this video is really a follow-up to the first video I did in May 2020 where I listed a lot of the defects that I'd found on this car um, in the first couple of months of purchase. You'll find a link in the description to that video if you haven't already seen it. So I thought I'd talk about the progress and show you the progress that I've made during my year of ownership. This year's been a very strange year uh, for us all due to the pandemic. Um, I bought the car just before lockdown and then it was probably May before I drove the car properly. But like so many others, uh, my job was affected. I was in the commercial aircraft sector and due to the global lockdown, uh, the work dried up and I was beginning to wonder if I was going to regret the timing of buying this car. It's a car that I'd waited maybe 20 years to own since I first saw one in the flesh uh, at a James Bond exhibition. But uh, towards the end of the summer, uh, my luck had changed and I'd uh, moved sideways within the business that I was in and job security came back. Hopefully means that I can enjoy the car for the foreseeable future. So the progress I've made this year perhaps hasn't been as good as I hoped. Uh, maybe next year it'll be a little bit better. Certainly the winter I've got a lot of projects planned. The jobs that I have got done that I included in the original video I'll go through now to show you my progress. The dials were covered in glue. Uh, having removed some really poor quality uh, aluminium rings that went around each of the dials. The majority of that glue I've removed, uh, but I still need to do a little bit of work. It uh, was painstaking work, just chipping it away uh, gently. A lot of it did just almost break away. So I need to find a way of softening the remaining glue so I don't do any damage uh, to the lacquer. I had an issue with the heated seats and the DSC uh, traction control uh, switch and I made a video on that one as well I'll put the link in the description but basically I changed the whole switch pack it cost me less than £100 to do so uh, and it wasn't a very big job either because the, the centre console on these cars come out in just minutes so that was nice to get that done so I had nice heated seats there was uh, a couple of issues uh, with the gearbox um, Although it wasn't actually the gearbox itself, it was uh, the setup of the J gate. The first issue was it was slipping out of gear. Usually, when I came to a stop at roundabouts or a traffic light, and uh, it would just go into neutral. Um, so I would put it into park and then back to drive, and it would back in gear again. The fix for that was really simple it was a very easy um, adjustment to the cable. I did that all at the um, J gate area. Uh, nothing nothing down near the gearbox. Um, but I use a different method to the one that was advised by Jaguar, so maybe I'll do a video on that one just to show how I did it. It might be helpful for people in the future. It was far more simple and less complicated than the procedure that Jaguar suggests you go through. The second issue was I had the very familiar to many uh, XK8 and XKR owners, which was the flashing lights on the J gate. Basically that means that the gearbox I think had gone into sort of a limp mode and you don't have sport mode anymore and uh, usually the problem is caused by the linear switch going bad. So I changed the linear switch and um, it didn't um, fix the issue. Uh, I managed to get a second hand unit, again not for a lot of money, about £80 I think. So I put the original one back on and investigated further and I managed um, to work out what the problem was. Uh, there is um, a circular disc that's underneath the, uh, the J gate that turns around when you move the gear stick through the um, 
the J gate. And that in turn links to a micro switch that effectively turns on the linear switch and allows the linear switch to um, electronically change the gears, uh, whereas uh, part neutral, reverse and drive are all done mechanically via the cable. And in essence, because that micro switch wasn't being pushed, then it was sending an error because it was getting confused. So I managed to get hold of one, uh, someone very kindly on a forum uh, sent me one uh, that they had in their shed and I fitted it and uh, all was good. Um, I did a video on that one as well, so I'll put a link to that in the description also. The sun visor was loose on the driver's side and um, really with thanks to John uh, from To The Garage, he put a comment on the video that just um, suggested I just needed to tighten the, uh, the screws that went into the headliner and, and that was correct, the ones on the driver's side were very loose. I also looked at the left hand side as well, the uh, passenger side, and, and although that wasn't um, evident it was loose, the screws weren't as tight as they should have been, so it was good to get those done as well. So the next one was the headrest up and down movement uh, that wasn't working. Um, I posted a video back in the summer of how I fixed that and uh, really followed the guidelines from Jaguar of how they fix it. I think they do it only about half an hour per seat. I took the seats out and um, did it indoors in, in uh, comfort as well. And I talked about in the video how I changed the radio. Um, I wanted to have Bluetooth uh, connectivity uh, for my phone uh, for, for making phone calls and obviously for streaming music as well. Uh, whereas the original couldn't do that and uh, also had the advantage of putting a DAB receiver in as well so I've got digital radio. Uh, that integrated really well um, both with the original aerial uh, with the converter and uh, also with the steering wheel control so everything works seamlessly and I think it looks quite neat as well. My car from new didn't have the upgraded stereo. I think the speakers would have been made by either Alpine or Harman Kardon. I think I've got the pronunciation correct on that. Uh, I don't know who the manufacturer would have been, but they were the cheaper speakers. So I've upgraded those to uh, Pioneer units, I think I've put in, uh, and also added a Kenwood underseat subwoofer. Actually, just sits behind the driver's seat rather than under the seat. But that makes it all sound a little bit better, although still not great. 